back to cleaning cast iron. Uh, the first step in cleaning cast iron is to have some cast iron that needs cleaning. Uh, today, we'll be doing this muffin pan. And uh, anyway, this one here, I think, is a real beauty. We got some good shots front and back of this here muffin pan. I think probably 1870s, if I had to guess. But uh, we'll see if there's some markings or something else underneath all that goo. Uh, something to wipe our hands with. That thing's really dirty. Uh, oh, we'll need some Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda uh, to make our electrolyte. Uh, and a cup to measure said washing soda in uh, C-clamp. A bent piece of wire. Gotta have that. And we'll see why in just a little bit. Um, I got a wooden stick here. Something to stir it around with. Gotta have that. And my sacrificial piece of steel is looking kind of sorry. So I'm going to clean that up and uh, we'll take a look at that and then we'll get going. Right. Okay, clean up sacrificial steel strip on aisle number seven. And there you have it. Let me use that C-clamp. We're going to attach that to the side. There you have it. We don't want that flopping around in there. Uh, and as far as our muffin pan is concerned, um, I'm going to take my fancy piece of uh, wire here. And look at that. Wow, that fits just perfect. Almost like I bent that ahead of time. Um, as far as the washing soda is concerned, there you go. Oh, whoa! Oh my goodness, that's 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 actually too much. Um, about a half a cup though, and uh, I'll have to pair that back. And um, oh, got to put some water in there first. So okay, let me pull this out of there put some water and then baking so you get the idea it's gonna be great all right I wanted to do a trial fit make sure that uh, everything was gonna sit right in our bucket uh, I've got the positive lead attached to the sacrificial piece of steel I've got the negative attached to the muffin pin that we want to clean up uh, we really don't want those two pieces of steel or those uh, positive and negative leads to come together uh, so I wanted to do a dry fit uh, and just make sure that there's no possibility that uh, that those two could touch. Um, that would be bad for our project. I'm satisfied now that there's no way those are going to come together, so let's fill that up with some water and get underway. And don't worry, the battery charger is not plugged in right now. Uh, Water and electricity don't normally mix. Okie dokie. Um, there's my battery charger. Got that at a garage sale. Uh, ain't she a beaut? Um, I bought that and a Lodge Dutch oven with a lid. Perfectly flat bottom. Beautiful, beautiful Dutch oven. Uh, and this, it was 20 bucks. I thought, um, I thought I did really good. Um, but anyway, so it's time to crank this baby up. And I'm going to go two hours uh, with this. After two hours, we'll turn the pan around and let the bottom face the uh, positive. It seems kind of the line of sight uh, seems to be the most effective. So you want to rotate your piece uh, and make sure you get front and back. So anyway, let's go ahead and turn that on. All right. That's what I'm talking about. That is electrolysis. Um, and what you're seeing there, actually, with all those bubbles, is the water molecules are being broken down and it's gassing off oxygen uh, and hydrogen. So this is a non-smoking area. And when you do electrolysis, you want to make sure you're doing it out of doors in a well-ventilated area. Uh, all right, it's been two hours and let's take a look. Ooh, that's quite a mess, isn't it? 
Um, just imagine all that goo is on the pan and now it's floating around on top of the water in that bucket. Uh, we're going to pull that out of there and see how it looks, so stand by. Oh man! Oh man! Now that's the way to clean a pan, my goodness! Oh, I'm going to take some stills of that first. Ugh. Okay, that looks great. Impressive. Look at that. Is that wonderful or what? Uh, we've made a lot of good progress on that muffin pan and I think it's looking really good. Uh, at this point, after the initial electrolysis treatment, it was very dramatic. We had chunks of it just coming off and it looked really, really good. Um, but there were some, some stubborn pieces down in the nooks and crannies. Uh, there, were, there were some things that, uh, that were a little bit hard to remove. And so a couple tips on getting at some of the, uh, some of the some of the more stubborn pieces of the old seasoning and, and crud that's stuck to that pan. Uh, bake it in the oven, 400 degrees for about an hour. You want to dry that stuff out real good. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to take the wire brush or the dental tool after it. Maybe chip a little bit of that stuff off of there. Uh, that's certainly fair. But at this point, I think we're just going to go ahead and uh, put it back in the brine and today's the last day for it so as you can see we're we're real close and uh, if anything's left on after this I think I'm just going to season right on over the top of it and we're going to we're going to put it back to use so Safety Dog is inspecting the battery charger and the electrolysis setup. What's in here? No, that's an ant. Here, what's going on? See, he's inspecting everything. He says it's time to go ahead and um, turn this thing on and get bubbling. So, uh, here we go. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And we have a problem. What could it be? Oh. I suppose you need to plug it in if it's going to work. Okay. All right. I've cleaned up the muffin pan as good as it's going to get. And now it's time to apply the seasoning. The first step is to preheat to 215 degrees. That's going to drive out any moisture. We want that cast iron to be perfectly dry. The other thing it's going to do for us is that hot iron uh, is going to allow this Crisco to flow a lot easier. It's going to make it a lot easier for it to get into the nooks and crannies and pores of the cast iron. Plus, uh, we're going to avoid having any glops and glops that are going to create sticky spots. We want a nice, thin, even coat. All right, so we'll just take a little bit of that, put it on the pan, and we're going to work it around with paper towel. Okay, well, we've got that side then. Don't forget the bottom. And so again, we want a nice, thin, even coat. Uh, we don't want it puddling or pooling up. That's just going to create gooey spots, and that's not really going to be a happy thing for us. Well, Q-tips are amazing, aren't they? Thousand and one uses. Okay, uh, it's taken us so long to apply the seasoning that it's cooled back down to where we can handle it, and that's just fine. Uh, but as you can see, there's no globs, uh, there's no drips, there's no runs. 
Uh, it's just, it looks damp. A nice thin even coat all around and that's what we're looking for. So time to go back in the oven and let's bake that on. Now we're going to bake that first coat of Crisco on at 300 degrees for an hour and let that cool all the way back down. Then we're going to apply a second coat of Crisco and bake that on at 350 degrees for an hour and let that cool all the way back down. And then our third and final coat we're going to bake that on at 400 degrees and then we should have the perfect seasoning for our reconditioned muffin pan. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Mmm. Don't those look good? And how'd that seasoning turn out? It looks like that seasoning turned out rather well. Yep, they pop right out. Perfect. I can't wait to get into those. Do we really own a piece of cast iron? I don't think so. I think we're just caretakers. That muffin pan was old when I was born, and with a bit of luck and care, it'll be around long after I'm gone. In its long history, I'm just somebody that rescued it, reconditioned it, and put it back into service. Maybe you've got a great old piece just waiting to be enjoyed. It's not hard, just takes a bit of time. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again real soon.